Unfortunately, tuba players have a reputation for being the most unmusical musicians around. It doesn't need to be that way. That's a stereotype that we all need to be trying to break. Um, one of the best things you can do to sound musical is to use a little bit of vibrato on long notes. And this etude gives us that opportunity in a couple of places. You don't have to do it, but if you want to, you can. Um, we usually use vibrato on long notes. If, if we're using vibrato, we use it on long notes. Um, just because a note is long, that does not mean you have to use vibrato on it. But if you want to add a little extra color or extra expression or personality to a cantabile phrase, you might pick one of the longer notes in the phrase and add some vibrato to it, like the dotted half note in bar 20, or the dotted half note with the fermata in bar 28. That, that one with the fermata is, is, a, is a great candidate for vibrato, because otherwise you're just kind of holding this note for a long time, and it could maybe get boring. Um, so to keep that note interesting and keep it expressive, you might put a little vibrato on it. So anyways, how the heck do we play with vibrato? Um, there are a few different ways that a brass player can play with vibrato. I'm gonna talk about uh, the most basic kind. And I call this the most basic kind because it doesn't affect how you're sending your air. What I'm talking about is jaw vibrato. When you use a jaw vibrato, you just keep sending the air from the lungs just as if you were playing a note in a perfectly normal way. The thing that you change is you move your jaw up and down a little bit. And as you move your jaw up, it will raise the pitch a little bit and maybe make the note a little more intense, maybe a little louder. And as you bring the jaw down, it will lower the pitch just a little bit and maybe relax the note a little bit. So if you've never used vibrato before, what I would recommend is picking the easiest note on your instrument for tuba, that's probably the F below the staff, just F at the very bottom of the staff, not the four lines down. But, um, so for tuba, pick the note right at the, at the bottom of the staff um, on bass trombone. I'm going to play the note in the middle of the staff, the F. So you just play a note with a nice straight sound first to establish a good sound, and then experiment with a little bit of jaw vibrato. If you use a mirror, it'll make it a little bit easier to, to kind of figure out what's going on. Hopefully you won't need the mirror. Hopefully you'll try it once and it'll just happen. Um, and we want to be careful not to over, overthink things. So if you try it the first time and you don't need the mirror, then you don't need it. You know? um, so once you've gotten a vibrato, then you can start to experiment with different speeds of vibrato. There can be a fast kind of vibrato that uh, sometimes we hear like British euphonium players play with, kind of like. That's really only appropriate for British euphonium players. Uh, but uh, that's sort of the extreme of, of brass player fast vibrato. Um, as far as uh, what I think we want in, in this piece is more of a nice cantabile that, that a string bass player might play with. If, you, uh, if you've ever seen a string bass player play before, I'm not sure if you can see my hand, here we go. Um, when, when, like, when a violinist does vibrato, it's sometimes, sometimes very fast. It's kind of really fast like that for those high notes that the, that the uh, violins play. If you look at a string bass player play with vibrato, um, their vibrato is more like a slow, calm, resonant sound, like that. That's, in general, what we want on tuba. So I would recommend a slower vibrato. I'll do a fast vibrato, like the fast extreme of like British euphonium player playing some solo note. Um, and then I'll do kind of a middle of the road vibrato, and then a slower vibrato that I think would be appropriate for this piece. And I, I adjust it all by the speed at which I move my jaw. So here's the fast vibrato. And here's sort of a middle of the road vibrato. And here's sort of the, the other extreme, if you're trying to really, really milk a note with a fermata on it, like a really rich tuba note. So it's a, it's a subtle difference, but it's kind of the difference between having nuance in your playing and having no nuance in your playing. And if there's no nuance in your playing, no subtlety, then people are going to accuse you of being unmusical, and then you'll be perpetuating the stereotype of the unmusical tuba player. And we don't want that. We want to be, you know, 
We want to fight the man, and we want, we want to prove to the establishment that tuba players can be just as musical as a cellist or a trumpet player or a flute player.